a lot in video games. Uh, the most recent one that came out was Epic Mickey 2 for Disney. And we actually, uh, the script was up for a Writers Guild Award for Best Script. Uh, of the hundreds of uh, games out there, only five got nominated. And though we didn't win, Assassin's Creed Liberation, I think, won uh, this past Sunday at the uh, Writers Guild. It truly was incredible honor to be nominated uh, in a, uh, by the Guild for that because those are all fellow writers who are doing the nomination. So that was great, and I've done, uh, I did a movie, animated movie for China, and I've been doing development and animation, of course I do comics. Well, I've always, I've always played games. I mean, I've had the consoles forever, uh, since they first came out, and uh, I love playing, I love gaming. But what happened was, uh, they, back about seven years ago, they needed, um, a rewrite on a game um, uh, based on the Superman Returns movie, uh, but they could. Everything was running very slowly, so they brought in two of us, myself and uh, writer named Tom Tilly, who was a major game writer, going with one from animation, and uh, he was coming in as the game uh, professional. I was coming in as the comic book guy. Uh, to, to redo it. Flint, during that time, uh, worked with me because we had been friends for a long time, uh, to learn how to handle all the, all the differences between gaming, game writing and uh, animation or comics or linear writing. And since I was already a gamer in terms of playing, it didn't take a lot to figure out uh, with Flint how to handle those, uh, the things that are very, very different. If I hadn't been a gamer to begin with, it would have been impossible. But I already understood 85% of it, and I had been a writer for all the years before anyway. So just learning the specifics of game writing, things that are different from every other field, that's what Flint uh, worked on and taught me. And from there I went on and started writing other games as well. Uh, console gaming, maybe the $60 games are a little bit down because you can buy uh, all the uh, iPad and uh, phone games for a lot cheaper. And I think you're going to see a slight revolution, but people who would never buy a, an Xbox 360 or a PS3 or a Wii are playing games, they're just playing them on their phones or they're playing them on their tablets. So I think Gaming is probably growing faster than anybody, uh, faster than anyone realizes. Just not in the, tr uh, not in any format that had existed three years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so things are changing very quickly. Also, I think when you have the opportunity to buy a game for a couple of dollars that can entertain you for a while, that's that's a great deal. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you could. You could buy whatever you think of it, Angry Birds, and I think it's a great game. Uh, very simple, but it really takes a lot of work to learn and master. Uh, but you could spend hours upon hours and hours for less than three dollars. Where else can you do that? Uh, a console game, the brilliance of the console games, is that you can play with people all around the world. So there you start developing a different type of game, you start developing more uh, play in conjunction with your friends. And so that's the big. The problem with comics is for the most part, even though comics are now available on the iPad, um, they haven't changed. They haven't grown with the times. They're still doing exactly the same type of material they did in 1938, but they're now putting them on an iPad. You, know, you have to rethink from scratch what is a comic book, why a comic works, and then adapt it to the modern terms because a lot of it just feels that you've seen it before and frankly, do you want to read an issue of The Avengers or do you want to see the movie? And the movie's going to be spectacular and depending upon who wrote that particular issue, it could be up and down and you only may get a little part of a story, not the whole story, and 
I love writing comics. It's, it's still my favorite thing to write. But I would love the chance to do, to redevelop the very concept of comics for the digital age, and that has nothing to do with just simply photographing, uh, scanning the comic, and putting it on the tablet. It has to do with a complete rethink of everything. Uh, some of my favorite comics that I ever did were my Mickey Mouse and uh, um, DuckTales comics for Disney uh, back in the early 90s. Very intricate stories, probably more intricate than anything else, simply because the material allowed me to do that. You know, um, I was telling a grand adventure, but very carefully structured and plotted. Um, in terms of other books, Night Force is one of my all-time favorites, and I just did a seven-quarter that I'm incredibly proud of. Uh, I love the I love the finished story. It didn't sell worth anything, but um, in terms of the what I wanted to do, it it was 95 percent exactly what I wanted, and. Um, I thought it worked really well, huh? and at least the people who have read it who told me about it really like the story as well. So, you know, that's not a big seller. In fact, it's the exact opposite. But it's probably some of the most satisfying uh, material that I've ever written. Well, when you try to, when you're working in the business and you come in and you're writing Superman or Spider-Man, you're taking the work of another creator and trying to develop it for the future. If you don't own your material, and when you work on some awful, you don't, uh, you're still trying to do that, you're trying to do the absolute best story that you can, and trying to create the best characters you possibly can, because there is financial reward and all of that. But you have to assume up front, if you're successful at what you're doing, that the product is gonna live on after you're off of it. You know, that's just an assumption that you make, just the same way as when I wrote Superman or Spider-Man that lived on long past Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster and Stan and Steve Ditko. So uh, that comes with the territory and it's a sign that you did your work well that people still want to use the characters that you created because people have created characters for years and they never seen again. So that means that I did a good job. I don't read any of it. I've always made it a policy never to read any characters based on uh, stuff that I've created after I leave it. Uh, that's the same reason I never ask the previous writers on the books that I've taken over what I should do. I wanted to do what I felt was right, and it's my belief if I had that freedom to do the Teen Titans my way, the next writer should do the Teen Titans their way without any interference from me. Uh, if I owned it, it would be a completely different situation, but I don't. I'm really impressed that this is a very educationally driven uh, event. Uh, I wasn't sure what it was I was asked uh, because somebody else I met at another convention and I became friendly with said, you'll have a good time here. But I didn't realize that it was as educationally driven, and I think that is great. Um, I would love to see more of that being done uh, in the States. Uh, you know, there's one little table that you can buy some comics, but only from the people who are actually guests here. Uh, other than that, it's purely about process and structure and understanding how you do work and. Uh, that to me is just amazing uh, and I love it.